Hi. So um, I'm just going to uh, run down the usual spiel about the Hear Art Center and the Heart Program. Uh, my name is Taylor Mack. I am interviewing a bunch of harp artists um, from the Hear Art Center. Uh, what harp is is just a program where people apply for it, and they get to artists get to work on their um, ensembles or individual artists get to work on their projects for a number of years. Uh, because Kristen Marding, the artistic director, and and here they did, they knew that artists. Need, especially artists that are making their own work, uh, need uh, time to develop and this pressure of uh, <laughs> this regional theater pressure of three weeks and go is not necessarily what uh, is the best way for some artists to work. So uh, they created this many years ago um, and uh, artists get uh, space and they get um, fellowship with other artists. Uh, there's breakout sessions where people teach each other um, things that they know. Uh, other artists teach each other like how to write grants and how to create a budget and all that kind of stuff. And, and there's a wide range of people who know a lot of different stuff. So it's it's pretty useful. And you, the here will produce the work or co-producer, whatever the artist kind of needs and wants. Um, sometimes the artist will just produce it all on their own. Uh, and it's, it's always shifting. It's usually hybrid work, um, whatever that means to the artist. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with Minor Theater Company. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I, I, will you guys all introduce yourselves since I don't know all of you? Let's we'll start with Julia. How about you, Julia? Is that How about good? it? Yeah. Um, hi, yeah, my name is Julia Jarko. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the writer of the plays that this company, Minor Theater, puts on. Um, and I usually also direct them. Although for this project, Marie, it's time. I'm not directing it in part because I'm, uh, I'm performing in it, which I don't usually do um, along. How do you feel about that? <laughs> feels great. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you've, you've, you've been a performer <laughs> many times, right? Um, I, mean... I, I think of it as something I did in my, in my wild youth. Uh -huh. that I, um, <laughs> you know, that I wisely that put pocket. behind me. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but yeah, so, um, so this, this piece that I guess we'll talk about is, is kind of about performing and about um, relationships between kind of writing things and acting them out. And so it felt like important um, to be on stage and not just delegate that task to the person I'm going to pass the mic to now, who is Jennifer yeah. Seastone. Um, Jennifer. Hey, uh, I'm Jennifer Seastone, and I mostly act in minor shows, but I uh, have also done some video design for the last show. But in, in this one, I will be acting with Julia and Kideon, and I go by she, her pronouns, and I think that's, that, that covers it. Very good. Maybe I'll pass it to Ian since since they're they're next on the acting lineup. Wow. Okay, the acting lineup's going strong and hot. I'm Kitty and Cohan. Um, I use they them pronouns. I am not a member of minor theater, but I've worked with minor theater before, and I'm performing in Maria's time as the role of the major. Um, and I feel very grateful to be here, and I um, care for these people very much. Uh, I'll pass to Ben Williams. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a, a he, him, and I'm a, a, an actor sometimes and a sound designer sometimes for these guys. Alistair. Um, Right, and though you m might not be explicitly performing on stage in this one, it is a sound-based thing, and you are the sound dramaturg we look to. Um, I'm Austa, she, her. I am directing this piece. Previous roles have been costume designing for this company. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that was a pretty good stringing together a narrative because I feel like I don't have to talk too much about why <laughs> I stepped into that role. 
Um, is that a good yeah, uh, that's, chance? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And so why don't, why don't we talk about, um, and you know, I, I, I'll try to like pass it off to somebody and do that hosting duties and stuff so that we don't have uh, horrible Zoom talk over each other. But, um, but Asa, why don't you talk uh, about uh, this piece and Woodcheck and, you know, how it relates and all of that. Um, Get us start. Get us started. The the easy part. Um, so Maria, it's time is some. Uh, let's say it's like our um, mixtape love song to uh, Marie and her choices and her decisions to go make out with the major, and so in that sense, performance and role play and fantasy are like enacted in a kind of rock show where we also have things like dialogue and monologue and even staging. <laughs> and thematically, what are you what, what what are you addressing with this? Jenny <laughs> um, did we say that it is a response to or, or some sort of, um, it calls on Wojciech? Was that said out loud? I had mentioned it, but you didn't say that. So yeah, uh, so t talk to me more about that. Because there's a couple of pieces in, in the HARP program that are working off of, uh, there's the, the Carmen variations, you know, that are working off of um, a, a former piece and kind of transforming it or, or as a springboard. And I'm curious um, a little bit about Kristen Martin's curatorial <laughs> decision in that, but also what that means working in fellowship with other artists who are doing that and uh, have you been in conversation with them? And also what, what's your, what's the drive? I guess is really what I'm asking. Yeah. Well, I guess um, I might soon pass it to Julia for, for that in the writing, but um, you know, in, in myself, I'm attracted to it because it is um, a story that is so fully um, like a male-based narrative that kind of discards the, the woman as like a side story um, and, and doesn't really consider her in the in the narration of his journey, um, although she's the one that is, you know, killed um, in the end. And, uh, and so it's interesting to me because of, of the turning the tables on it and also the idea of two of her um, and or not really, um, I guess that's a little bit um, nebulous in the story, whether or not there is two of her, but the idea of performance and and what it means to be one person um, who is at the center of their own narrative or not. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just turn it to Julia to have more of a complete answer to that. Oh, no, I mean, I, I know nothing more complete, but I, but I do, um, yeah, I mean, so I'm, um, I love this play, Wojciech by Buchner, I think, yeah, 1830s, you know, it's it's this unfinished play, right? He he was in his twenties and he wrote this play, um, and he kind of left it in piles, and then he died, um, ASAP. So people, you know, after since discovering this text, have um, you know people love to direct this play because there's so much room for choice. Like every edition that gets published of the play puts the scenes in a different order and kind of tries to repair the gaps differently. So it's this text that is already kind of like a problem and a mystery just in itself. But also, yeah, it's this text that I think people love because the hero slash anti-hero, Wojciech, who um, is this guy who, you know, he's, he's poor, he's oppressed, he's mentally ill. Um, everyone's trying to harm him, basically. Um, he hears that his common-law wife, who's the mother of his child, um, is sleeping with the um, the handsome drum major um, in the regiment that's just rolled into town. And so he, um, his madness gets even more intense and he murders her. Um, and, and that's the narrative, like it's a really skeletal narrative. Um, and I guess, you know, 
for me, this play sort of starting wanting to work on this play kind of came out of, I was teaching, I teach this play a lot. Um, when I teach playwriting, I think that, you know, the text is wild and beautiful and, um, and weird. Um, you know, but, but the way that I come back to it and the way that I feel sort of like thrilled by it, um, I started to be curious about that. I mean, a lot of our plays of minor theaters plays already are kind of about um, intersections between violence and sex and um, kind of darker and twistier parts of desire and, and especially I think women's desire. Um, but the way that this figure of Marie, who as Jenny said, you know, is never at the center of the story, but kind of like bursts onto the page as this like intensely sexualized and sexualizing figure. Um, and then, you know, gets her blood everywhere. Um, you know, I was like, why is that so appealing? You know, not only to me, but to apparently so many people that this is a huge canonical classic. Um, and sort of like, how, how would I find my way inside this play if I gave myself permission to go into it, not via the title character, but via Marie. Um, mm -hmm. And so that I think is sort of like, for me, how the project starts. Yeah. And are you, um, where are you in the process right now? So I can. <laughs> As I, you're muted. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> just to say it explicitly also Jenny and Julia are both Marie in this staging where mm -hmm. uh, we're playing with like also the slipperiness of staging and self in that way because um, mm -hmm. they push each other around um, to go get what they want. <laughs> And so are you, are you, uh, is she existing in a post-death uh, place or is she existing in the world of, um, uh, or do you I not think, know, you don't I have think, to know? <laughs> well, I think yeah. what's important to it, where we are in the process in a, in a way, like in a, in a literal way, the text is, uh -huh. um, there's a, there's a text we've been working off of, we've rehearsed, we're going to share some music that we've learned and performed together. Wonderful. Um, but in terms of like the meaning of this thing, um, we're like figuring out what it means for Jenny and Julia to both be Marie. For these two um, friends of mine and artists to be Marie, um, uh, which is very exciting. But I think like- As, the, as individuals, uh, I mean, as, as the actual artists themselves or or as two parts of a character or some hybrid of that? I think both, but Julia? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, to the question of like, is she dead? I think, I think the answer is like, yes, yes, and. Um, no, no, that, you know, that, 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 the, that the piece that we're trying to make is, is kind of about the process of stepping into a narrative that you already know um, so I think that there are moments in the play when we kind of, we occupy that narrative and, you know, yeah, we occupy that narrative. And in those moments, maybe, you know, Marie is alive again. Um, but that really the, the sort of like the, the theme or the thing that keeps coming back around is this question of like, what is it to, to make, to take that step, um, that step into a kind of fantasy of, of one's own murder, basically. Um, stepping in and stepping out. Yeah, wow. Uh, and so, and, and I mean, I was reading your mission statement on your on your website, which is so wonderful. And um, and it's so much about uh, you said you have this beautiful line about uh, practicing um, our way to. You guys can tell me better than I can remember it, but the impossible, essentially. And and how is that how is that working? It's impossible to step inside this uh, fictional character that is that is um, been murdered and is part of a lineage of women being murdered in in theater productions. And it's impossible to correct that wrong. Is that and yet here we are. We're going to explore it and wonder and and um, yeah. Just I guess just really just talk about that. I'm curious to hear. Um, 
I was going to ask. That stuff. I said I was going to host, but I'm not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> Just jump in. <laughs> I mean, if I may, or maybe this is a little awkward, like I think this, uh, like, Kiti, and I'm going to cue you up in a second a little bit to talk um, <laughs> because your character appears in the original Wojciech. And I think our journey in this process thus far has, we've learned, uh, like, w we also have more stage time in our version with the drum major than we have in the original Wojciech. Um, and I'm wondering if you could maybe describe a little bit about uh, your sense of the character. Yeah, um, for, for me, I just jump in and cold off it. I really, I mean, what I'm drawn to and interested in performing is this like canonical object of desire and like sort of <laughs> feeling, I, like I really, it's like yes, what an object <laughs> thrill to be like, <laughs> Um, no, but to be, to feel like wanted. And then, I mean, in Marie, it's time and the text that we're working on and what we're working on together. I think like myself, Kedian as a, a performer sometimes has a lot of judgment of like, is this person like deserving of affection? And like, are all any of the characters like deserving of each other's affection or pleasure or consent as, as they're in conflict with an, one another? Um, but I, yeah, to, I think for me, it's really exciting to not see Frank, like to see, not see Frank in our version um, in exactly the same way, but for me to get to embody um, a character that was an outlet for Marie's pleasure in the original one. Um, and to be in a contemporary version of that, uh, just in my own performer body is like totally thrilling and, um, set against the backdrop of like a, being a, a musician and being in concert um, and performing yeah. for these for these people and that's a thrill and sort of um, not known to me in my everyday life so stepping into that in the world of this play is is awesome and a different type of um, interaction so yeah, yeah. and it, and it, it makes the audience uh, uh, are you gender queer is, is that how you define yeah. yourself? Yeah. I, yeah, I define as trans, gender non-conforming. Yeah, gender yeah. So to, to like have the audience, I mean, <laughs> it's always tricky because the actor, you know, you actors want to be able to play actors. Like that's what they want. I mean, they want to be able to play characters and embody them. And at the same time, it, you guys and your theater company is so much about, yeah, but the actors are playing lots of different roles. So it's about performance as well. Um, and so uh, what I love about watching trans people on stage is that it's the duality of it is so intense, you know, especially with the history of that. So uh, I, I don't know, is that something you're working with or are you just going to just let it be? Yeah, right. it, it, no, I, it's it's like it's there for me. I mean, like I I remember, I mean, and I trust. I mean, I also performing with Jenny and Julia is is amazing. But also, there's always these moments for me where I'm like, like, I where I'm like, oh, like I where you just have a sense of self where you're like they're so beautiful and like I have this affection and we're like looking at each other, not to be like, but but seriously, where there's like you know, a lot of it, like, it is based in sex and violence and intimacy in this way. And then for me, I'm like, what am I? Who would like me? Who would want me? How are I don't really want people to look at me when I'm singing, but I, like, want affection and love just like everybody else on stage. So, right. like, that, <laughs> that, like, right, and right, so right. then, like, they make me feel hot and wanted. And so, like, for me, that experience... <laughs> is I'm I'll I'm like I'll do anything for them I'm like sure it's like, like being a show me. I'm like just just put me up in the gate right because um, I feel like I'm chasing a particular performance feeling but I'm sure Jen Jenny's also chasing performance feelings throughout this Marie over this how so Jenny well um I think it's super interesting what you were saying Kitty and I've never thought about like this idea of not wanting to be seen at all and yet totally giving your whole self to be seen. It's something that I think about a lot in performance. Like, I don't want anybody to look at me ever. And then yeah. like, but then there's this like thing that you do where you're just, you surrender to some sort of 
I don't know, like power where you then are, are giving something that isn't real, like that isn't authentic, but is the most authentic thing that you could ever give. Um, and then there's also this idea of, you know, I, I really hate this word meta because it's so overused, but like this idea of Julia. <laughs> but it's like, everything's meta. <laughs> right. I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, hear you, hear you, hear you. yeah being yourself on stage and a character and um, like specifically in this, in this show, you know, being a part of Julia and then Julia being on the inside of it, but also on the outside of it because she's written it and having been like, in a lot of Julia's work before and then having her on stage, this like weird, like wanting so hard to connect, but also being so confused about how to do it because it's so foreign. So it becomes more like real life on stage, the way like we interact in real life versus this like character that is this, we are the same, but it's really um, like a lot of circles for me. And then yeah, and, and then having Kitty in there also is just like a beautiful gift. So like the whole, and having Julia, like all of it is just such a gift <laughs> and also so confusing on how to like wrap your head around it and and kind of um, release into it and not be too much up here is really hard in this piece for me. Uh, and is that, is that um... Uh, and Ben, feel free to jump in because I know you've acted uh, in pieces as well. But is that um, is that something that is specific to this piece, working on this piece, or is that always when the the playwright is on stage with you? <laughs> um, maybe it's always when a playwright is on stage with you, which I've you know done in other things before. Because, but then there's like this deep comfort also, which is like. Like, especially when I'm with Ben on stage, it's like this, like, you don't worry about, you're just like in somebody's hands and you're like, you can have me in your hands and I will have you in my hands. Yeah. Um, so it's just like trying to figure out what that means when you're in your head a little bit. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because because the acting the acting fantasy is that we're never that we're we're chasing the sensation of trying to be in the place where we're not in our head right where we're just like playing tennis and that's the fantasy but um, but it's interesting to upend that fantasy and say no actually the goal is not to be in your head <laughs> right it's, yeah, that's it's, right. yeah yeah absolutely like what is performance anyway like we're all performing here. You know, we've right, developed right, right, right. performance and all of that, but then you put it on stage and, and you're questioning like the performance of all of the history of Wojciech also, and like the history of your relationships with the people on stage. And I don't know, I don't know if you have any thoughts Ben, in the past of, of other things that, that that relates to, just to make you talk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of this is making me think of, you know, if, if, if the way that we've worked on the show so far has, has pushed everything into the foreground in this way, like the, the, the performances, uh, you, you guys who are actually on the stage, it's, it's so much about um, uh, you really delivering to face forward to an audience, you know, and it makes me wonder, um, is there room for uh, a kind of interiority that we haven't found yet? And, and what, what would that look like? You know, um, I keep thinking of like Miles Davis, like with his back to the audience, like, and, you know, moving further away from the crowd and thinking of this as a rock show and thinking of this as everything is going forward into the mic to the audience all the time. Like, uh, I, I think there are moments of this of this play that we that 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 want to resist that in some way, and I uh, I'm curious to to know if that if that if that works. What would that look like if 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 we went the complete opposite direction? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I mean, Alistair, you should talk about that also. But I just you know. 
I mean, just to go back, Taylor, to your question about sort of like, what is the impossible in this piece? Or like, what is the impossibility that we're pursuing? I mean, I, I guess I think that, that part of that, part of it is about like the impossibility of not, like the impossibility of, of escaping interiority, right? The impossibility of getting out of your head. I mean, I think part of what's for me so kind of compelling about Marie in Wojciech is that she, I mean, she, you know, she talks to herself like every character in that play, but she's like, you know, she's like all body, you know, she's, um, she's like completely realized in her body. Um, she knows herself through her body and through her kind of bodily desires. And that body is, you know, on stage and kind of available, um, available to the major, to have sex with, available to Wojciech to kill and like available to the audience to kind of attach to in different ways. And, and in a way, I feel like that fantasy is precisely like the kind of, like what you're saying, Taylor, the like, I'm just gonna play tennis, you know, like I'm gonna get out of my head. I'm gonna, you know, get away from the computer where I write. I mean, this is obviously just me outing myself, but just like, you know, get on the stage and just be a body for once, right. like, how great, what must that be like, you know? Um, but obviously that's never, like never, 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 never possible. And, and in that move, you just end up kind of creating more circles and more spaces for yourself to hide. And you like drag everyone around you into that orbit of kind of neurotic self-concealment. And I feel like that spiral is, is one of the things that the, that the play is about, actually the impossibility of being a kind of of, of becoming an object in that way. Yeah, it makes um, me wonder about stops and starts and, um, and, uh, and, and flow. It makes, it makes me wonder about rhythm, you know, uh, uh, you, know you, you keep mentioning rock, rock show and, uh, and what it means to have a button and um, how, <laughs> I guess like, it's also like, the idea of not knowing is part of your kind of mission statement. Uh, I'm sorry to bring that up. I know it's obnoxious because people just write these things and they put them up and then <laughs> interview us. No, we up. mean every word. <laughs> we mean every word. But the idea of not knowing and then what? It, what is a stop? Is a stop knowing? Is the period knowing? Is a is a blackout knowing? Is a is a button at the end of a song knowing? And 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 is is eight bars of music uh, in some way kind of knowing? And so I. Uh, um, I'm curious about that, that, that desire to turn your back on the audience and not do it um, front. And I mean, there's a long history of rock and rollers doing that. And, but I, I'm curious about that within the question of how do we not know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Sorry, that was a lot to throw at you. No, <laughs> I mean, that was so fabulous. And I don't know if this is um, in rhythm with that, but like, I, I have to append from 10 minutes ago, Katie and, I loved and enjoyed so much you speaking about this role because we as an ensemble live in fear that you're gonna go to the major downtown theater presses and be like, I assistant directed for them. And then they objectified me and put me on stage as their <laughs> sexual plaything. I mean, you have uh, your first. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> But I mean, I think that's just like an important part of the the intimacy and the experiment of this ensemble in particular. Um, uh, uh, and, and might not speak to rhythm at all. But it does because it's built into all the scenes. I feel like I, the stops and starts for me come from when when Julia as Mag, as the Marie character is, is like directing in situ like interactions between um, the major and Marie, all those stops and starts, do it again. Um, those those breaks in action at when when you're aware that we're either you know we're performing uh, for one another. I feel like really built into the rhythm more so than I can like immediately grab onto musically, but um, I know it's there. Well, also what's odd is I was gonna say, like Ben you've modeled in previous minor theater productions some of this meta hijinks in shows where you did the sound and you were acting. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I, but, I did that. Yeah. 
Um, but what that's, was that's that? More I like, didn't see I feel like that's Tell more like shtick. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like that's almost kind of like shtick? a mode of operation at this point. I feel like as I, opposed I, to a technique. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to like yeah. a you know uh, a downtown theater technique where you know oh yeah the sound designers on the stage and they press the button and then they act the thing and that's part of like a history of performance. Um, no, there's a long history. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know. It brings up like interesting, interesting questions of, of thinking specifically about this piece and where does this piece want to go? You know, we're, we're, we're in this kind of like a, a little golden glowy area where we still have, where the show's not set. It's not, it's not, it's not made yet. You know, we've tried out a couple of different ideas of it so far, but, uh, you know, we haven't, um, there's still so much about what the show is that's, uh, and how it functions that's, that's, uh, that we don't know yet. Uh, and I, f I feel like, you know, with the, with the last show, it, it was a little bit built in from the beginning that I would be doing that, you know, and, and So, I mean, it came about like organically, like right, like it was kind of, I don't want to say it was written into the script, but it, it, um, there was just something about it that worked from the beginning, you know, and then it became fun. I mean, it was always fun, but, uh, and this, I don't know. I mean, part of this maybe is still that I'm still trying to find my way into this piece and to figure out what it is that I can do to to help facilitate this piece. And right now, you know, most of the way that's worked is that, I mean, I know all you guys so well, and I just have total trust in, in you guys. And I feel like I'm, you know, following uh, this process in a way. Um, uh, and, and, and kind of on the outside of it, you know? So, uh, I don't know what, uh, the techniques are, you know, I don't know what the, what the history of, of perform, how the history of performance in, in downtown is going to shape this piece, but, uh, it still feels like it's so malleable at this point. Um, we just need to be in the room together again, maybe soon, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe but soon. That, se that seems very appropriate that, you know, uh, a piece uh, um, that is doing what this piece is doing, that uh, the, the male sound designer follows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems appropriate to me. Good on I you. <laughs> I definitely don't need to be in front of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But uh, but but I mean, well, I mean, one one sort of downtown theater trope that has come up in our conversations is the play with songs model, which uh -huh. which has been hotly contested um, in this room, um, where there was a moment when I was like well, whatever it is, it's not another play with songs. And then, you know, had to like furiously backpedal um, afterwards because like, of course it is a play with songs. Um, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Uh, but, the, but the question of sort of like how music lives in this play, which is sort of the question of it being a rock show um, and also something else uh, is, is something that, you know, we've been working with our music director uh, and composer Jeff Aaron Bryant um, to figure out in different iterations, like different showings that we've done. Um, you know, because because like typically, right in in uh, in this world of theater, I think at least in the plays that I think of my plays as sort of coming out of or growing alongside of, you know, the song functions partly as a kind of acknowledgement of theatricality, like you know we're doing a scene. Oh, now we're doing a song. Um, we're all in on the joke together and, it, and it's great, you know, but I think in a way this piece is, is so much, is so, so much like located on that frame already that that, that can't be the logic of what the songs are doing. 
Um, I wonder if maybe this is this a good segue, perhaps? Yeah, to- yeah. Let's well, let's watch some let's watch some tape. <laughs> The devil's in you, so the devil wants you, so I do. Is that what that lyric was? Yeah. <laughs> that is good. That's a good lyric. <laughs> Thanks, Taylor Mac. Well, sure. Hey, you know. Um, so. Uh, so, I mean, amazing. That's wonderful. You have a wonderful voice. Are you a musician or are you, uh, are you just doing it because of this, you were casting this and they told you you have to sing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Julia writes these amazing lyrics and songs and, and um, yeah, Jeff Aaron Bryant has been working as our music director and composer. And yeah, that, really that, I've just, I've never, I mean, everyone I think has the fantasy of like fronting a rock band or singing and Mm -hmm. being like that. But honestly, um, it's wild. I can't, I I don't know. The experience of of singing and performing in this piece is, I think back to your earlier question, that's where I struggle the most. Just like within, you know, life and and transition. I watched that video, it's probably a year ago now that video was filmed. I'm like, I don't even, like we would change the key. Like, I don't even, you know, it would just sound different. It just, every month and every time it will change. 
and yeah, it's so fun to do, but really, really, really vulnerable. And I think the acting is like really not vulnerable for me, not like to be like that, but it's really not. It's like so right. fun and devilish. Um, and like, you know, stepping into being intimate, but the the singing in this aspect for me is definitely is like my own personal performer, a little pocket challenge. Whereas I think Jenny yeah. and Julia are working, you know, we all have our own little little performer pocket we're either like protecting or throwing up in. So yeah. <laughs> I'm working yeah. It. But that's a beautiful place when when you get to watch people be vulnerable and and do it anyways, you know. I mean that's it's that's that's <laughs> so, somebody somebody was i saw some award show or something where somebody was lip syncing and some rock and roller was like like why didn't she sing live i mean i can't sing i sing live <laughs> it was so it was so amazing and you can sing but but i just love the i love that 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 the beauty of that the bravery of that and and finding a way to put that on a stage is just like that's it that's all it is you know <laughs> virtuosity and and that at the same time you know so um so talk to me about your your company and how you make how you make a company and and it's rare for there to be a company um where it's the playwrights you know, I can think of Young Jean Lee's company, you know, what she calls it that, but it's really Young Jean Lee, right? And, and so what does it mean to have an ensemble? Uh, and the playwright is, it's one playwright uh, and um, I'm assuming one costume director. And uh, and so uh, how, how is that navigated and how does it work? It's, it sounds divine to me. But. <laughs> Anybody? Alistair. Uh. Um, okay, I've plugged headphones back in. Definitely not technical. Um, I think this is an organic. Uh, Kedian is a recent addition to this four group who have were making plays, and it was structured in a kind of Julia's writing, directing, and we were putting up shows, and there was a desire to have more of a through line than just sort of putting up shows. And it's really exciting that this has created an arc across our productions where, um, you know, Jenny was uh, acting primarily and then shifted into her role. Um, and I think the, the sort of, the, the trust and shared love of doing the plays together um, Julia's writing is a big spine in it, and it's the it's the shared thrill um, of of just making making plays together. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a real delight. I mean, yeah, like uh, which essentially began with a show called Grimly Handsome, which is it's really wild to me that actually that was a three person play where Jenny played. A kind of cipher of Julia, and it was interested in masculinity and uh, um, a grimly handsome man personified by Ben Williams, a sort of sexy sound designer. So it's really all quite full <laughs> circle here. Right. <laughs> because now it's Maria. Is, is Maria the character's name? Marie. 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 Maria is in some ways the cipher. Yeah. Is that? Is that fair yeah. to say? Mm -hmm. um, is that furthering the misogyny to say that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a question. <laughs> no. I don't know the answer. To but that was, but that was a piece that was about. I mean, uh, about uh, our shared love of watching Pete Simpson and Ben Williams and Jenny Seastone do some really great text on stage, and. Uh, I think the sort of, we've just been really blessed to have a lot of other uh, collaborators who've thrown a ton of energy and joy into um, some really, uh, yeah, just some really fun uh, work. And there's a kind of shared sense of humor of this group. 
And so is that the, is that the, uh, is the, the, the challenge to mix up who does what? It seems like maybe that's happening a little bit. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that, yeah, that, that has been a feature, yeah, going through. And I think something that excites us that each of us mm -hmm. plays multiple ro roles, sometimes within like a show, but certainly. The actors, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, like the creation of what the theater company is, like the structure of who's in charge of what is like pretty like dispersed and and I think uh, not like we're trying really hard not to make it a power structure of who does what and who can do other things, which I think is really a difficult way to navigate through in the beginning, but is a really interesting exercise in coming together and doing it together, but also taking responsibility or giving responsibility um, that I think we're still, you know, navigating through in a really exciting and scary way. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's uh, keep us posted on how that goes. Because <laughs> it feels like there aren't that many models for it. And it's, um, and it feels, to me, uh, when I read about it, I just thought, oh, yeah, that's how dreamy is that? Because the ego of, you know, Moliere obviously had a company, but it was Moliere's company, you know. And so that um, and like the Wooster group obviously is a, uh, is a group of, of theater people. But, you know, it, it, nothing really happens without their artistic director. You know what I mean? So it's like what what is the there's lots of devised companies, but what is the what's the ensemble with the. Um, a playwright, one one playwright, even if you mix it up. I just find that, I find it um, exciting. So I hope, I hope you keep talking to um, people like HowlRound about it and, and the process, <laughs> that's all. Thanks. Um, uh, and then I, 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 we'll go soon, but I just wanted to ask you also about aesthetics. Like what, what, what do you, uh, working downtown, you know, so much of the aesthetics sometimes feels like it's, um, dictated by economics. And, I, and I, I wonder about that in terms of content and aesthetics and, and, uh, and how you, you work with them, both the design of sound, but also just uh, um, uh, how, how, you're, how you're blending that into the work, I guess. You mean like cheapness? <laughs> well, like a chair on a stage, um, is is either an economic decision or it's um, it's about content and it's a choice and it's you know and so I just wonder um, where that where that is with you like do you have the dream of of having um, an opera budget for this or do you have and and that's what you would like or do you have the dream of no I, a minimalist. Uh, um, aesthetic allows you to dig deeper into the content that you want to express. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. I mean, definitely give us the opera budget. Um, <laughs> and you'll but, pay people. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, but I think that, I mean, one way to answer that is to say that negative space is super, has always been super important in all of our yeah. shows. And, yeah. you know, um, the tension between the seen and the unseen. I mean, we did a show called The Terrifying, um, a few years back, which was a, a horror play and was a chance for Ben to build like a super rich, intense soundscape, um, you know, with speakers under the seats and just really immersive and telling an enormous amount of story um, through sound. Um, and, and part of why that a project like that makes sense, at least to me for us is that um, I think we're always kind of playing, I mean, to go back to the thing about the impossible, like we're always kind of playing on the edges of the invisible um, and the thing that kind of can't, can't quite be realized. I mean, I do think Marie, Marie most explicitly of all our plays kind of takes place in a kind of like on the threshold between the real and the imaginary. But I, but I think in a way that's true of all of the plays and, and the, you know, that they're all kind of plays about um, about fantasy, like uh, plays about sort of like um, building dream, building desire. And so in a certain way, 
I think a lot of the choices, even our kind of more built up designs um, are, are not about um, like creating a stable, a kind of imaginatively stable landscape. It's more like we want a space for um, a, a space to play with shadows in kind of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's a beautiful way to say it. <laughs> uh, well, uh, in the acting, yeah. like in the, it's in the content and it's in like the, all of the rest of it too, like how pared down can it be without, and like put on and pulled down at the same time. Like it's mm -hmm. not all about suspension of disbelief or anything like that or any, right. there is like a, a, a striving for a communication. Uh -huh. Do you feel like that's just like, we well, don't want to trick anybody. Is that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no tricking. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm down to trick people, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I mean, I think that what you were saying before was something like, I don't believe in scenery. Like you don't believe <laughs> in like, right. Like, like we believe, I think in, um, role-playing and make-believe right and we believe we are not these people on stage which is getting pushed i think to a certain extreme with this project that is new that is new i think uh -huh. um but i think like i mean it but it's did, still theater it's it's i mean in grimly handsome we made red panda costumes that um jenny and ben wore which was really I'm always looking to get back to the creature aspect of this show. Uh, uh. Um, but I think like, like for example, in, in terms of where we are with this piece, it's a fairly live question um, that what you saw was footage of the dot and the dot felt very immediate as a space and the stripped quality of that performance felt really exciting uh, so now ben often asks the group when are we going to hire like a set or like other designers um which we we will um <laughs> but like and we will be articulating these desires but like with the journey of this piece it's not really clear necessarily yeah i just think it's a it's alive in a way like a, so much of the downtown theater that I see is um well it's what it's what we're doing you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> we got a chair because it's what we is what we it's what we could do for now you know what I mean but to make a choice of the space and the, as you say the shadows um is uh yeah it's a, to love the dot for being uh empty is um and intimate at the same time is uh is a special thing. Basil would love to hear you say that because it's named after his, his mom. Um, but, you know, uh, uh, I just wanted to ask before we go, um, if there's anything that you guys want to ask of the community, do you need to help make your piece or do you want the uh, community to consider something in, in as you're considering this work or what? It, it just, yeah, if there's something you want to ask of, please do. Even if it's just money. <laughs> I mean, come and see it when we do it. That's good. <laughs> I mean, I another thing is just, um, you know, Asta mentioned, you know, that that the the company will have to grow for this show. That will be, you know looking for new collaborators. And I think, you know, something that's, that's of interest to us is like, um, how can we make this uh, a welcoming place to be, um, this company? Mm. How can we ma make it um, a, a site that people want to join up with? You know, we've talked a lot mm. about how much love and trust we already have for each other, which is great, um, obviously, but, but I think a question you know, some, something that, that is a live question for us right now um, is how could we welcome people that we're not already working with um, mm -hmm. into this project and give them a, a real voice in the room um, 
in a way that feels like meaningful to them. Yeah, that's, I'm sure there are some people out there in the HowlRound world who will have some thoughts about that for you. Yeah, we are happy to <laughs> yeah. hear those thoughts. Yeah, really, yeah. really welcome those thoughts, you know, however broad or small they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's something we've so, talked a lot about. I'll say something that happened recently with me was uh, we had a design meeting and Nigel Smith, we're, we're, we're working on a piece called The Hang. And so it's kind of about hanging out. So Nigel Smith is directing. He just had us all like go around and talk about um, just uh, some kind of origin story of our lives, you know, which seems like group therapy. But it immediately connected me with everybody. And I knew most of them, but I just, it, it just was the, it was so simple. It was Meredith, um, not to give away anything away about her life, but Meredith who works at here, she, she told a story and I thought here Meredith was always this producer who worked at here. And I was like, oh yeah, she's that person that works at here. And suddenly I, I felt <laughs> so emotionally connected to her just because she told the story of, you know, she was given the space to tell a story about her life. I thought, all oh, right, now I'll never have a problem. Um, with a contract with her because I'll see her as a person before I see her as a piece of paper <laughs> or somebody who has given me a piece of paper. So it's uh, that I will say is what I don't, I'm ashamed that I'm 47 and I just learned that technique, but that is the technique to use. <laughs> there you go. Thank you, that's really nice. Yeah, that's useful. Um, anything else you guys wanna add? We're looking for places to show the piece too. You're right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bring us Great. to your theater. Well, uh, oh yeah, well, that's a whole nother conversation of how you're taking your world, your work out into the world, but we could do that at a later time. And, all right. Great. Thanks everybody. Thanks.